the later so you guys can all see it. Okay, so I'm doing the next live video, and this is going to be about um, the events that happened um, to Elvis, I guess, when he staged his death. All right. So we all know, and it said that there was a body switch involved. He took an injection, according to this book here, and it made him look like he was dead. But his friends knew better. And the injection only lasted X amount of hours. And then he said in the book that Ginger took forever to find his body. So the injection started wearing off. So the other body, also the body that died, now there were some accounts in uh, Is Elvis Alive? It said that the body was brought into the mansion in a room of some sort, secret room, <clears throat> and um, was uh, left there to basically be treated until he passes on. Um, the Elvis found alive documentary he says that the body was brought or the man was brought into the pool house and left on life support and when it was time uh, for him to expire completely he would be just taken off life support in other words he'd be like almost completely dead so um to keep the body like working until it was time to do the body switch they kept him on life support and then someone just pulled that plug and he finally died. And then they brought, uh, dressed him up like Elvis was going to be dressed up and left in the uh, closet in the bathroom. We also know that Billy Smith had mentioned that uh, Elvis had planned on doing this. He was talking about it in 1975 after he had plastic surgery on his chin line. Right? Maybe some old, you know double chin or whatever he needed done to make himself look less puffy maybe or something i don't know all right anyway <clears throat> and um billy smith thought he was crazy okay he also said in this book that he commissioned a wax body um and he told the gentleman that made the body to keep it a secret not to tell anybody. And when he told Larry Geller and Joe Esposito about the body, they thought he was crazy. And they ended up using the wax body in the funeral. So how did they go about doing it from like a body double to a wax body? Well, we don't really get all that information, first of all, from our readings. That's something that um, Elvis set up. But I'm going to add, I'm going to guess. I'm going to make like an estimated guess of what I think actually happened. Was okay. So they switched the body with Elvis's, and he went into the closet. The paramedics came, and you know they made it look like they were doing CPR on him and everything. You know, and they said. And she said in the book it took them it took them quite a bit of time to go from the hospital to Graceland. Also, the question would be is why did the ambulance go to Baptist Memorial when the closest hospital was not Baptist Memorial? By law, they're supposed to take body to the closest hospital. But it was all set up that way to go to Baptist Memorial. At the hospital, of course, they pronounce him dead. They do the toxicology report. They do that. They found his stomach was pumped. This was information I got from Linda Hood Sigmund's Truth, um, dot com about um, hospital records and what they did at the autopsy. So I will give you the link to that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll look up the page that it's on and I'll give you that link in the description after and you guys can look at that, okay? It said something like the discrepancies in the autopsy was interesting because they said, first of all, there was nothing in the stomach. Second of all, he was on high-level pain medications. 
Now, the pain medication would be for cancer patients, you know, and things like that, which they found in this investigation in this book. She mentioned that. Also, um, there was discrepancies in, um, like, they never took pictures of the body. Why? They're supposed to by law, and they never did. So, needless to say, this was all set up. Now, I don't know what they did with the body after, but I, I'm assuming they took it to the funeral home. And it was all planned out the funeral home to switch the body to a wax dummy. So, I'm assuming that they must have did this, and that is they must have made arrangements with his family, the body double's family, to send his body over to be privately buried with, you know, in the family plot, decided on. He was already dying anyway, so they probably already had that all planned out. And they put the wax body in the casket. So, Gene Smith had told Deborah Brando, Deborah Presley Brando, that the that the casket was 900 pounds. And he said it was cooled by an air conditioner. And the body in the, in the casket was wax. And he had to press on the sideburn because it was, on, the glue was falling off. On a video, he had told everybody on the video that um, he... Um, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Anyway, oh, Gene Smith told people on the video that the body didn't look anything like Elvis. Um, and that it was sweating. And, and the sideburns looked like they were glued on. And he said the hands were like as smooth as a baby's bottom. And Elvis's hands are usually calloused and ripped up from karate and he said he didn't even look like him in the face his nose is all pudgy all right and and many people walked by that casket and said didn't look anything like him that's what jesse said in this book it didn't look anything like him and i don't know if he just secretly taped these people somehow or if he actually was there in a secret room because he also tells Dr. Hinton that there are secret rooms or secret passageways in uh, Graceland that nobody knows about. Not even Ginger knew. So he could have been hiding in one of those places, all right, during the funeral. Now, there's been two or three different stories, all right, that have been told. So I'm going to tell you the two or three different stories of how he escaped Graceland. Okay? So the first story I heard is off of the documentary, Elvis Found Alive. He said a helicopter was supposed to come and get him. But there were so many people and so much press around that the helicopter couldn't land. So he somehow climbed out of the, um, out of the window up onto the roof and then kind of walked across somehow, slid down and went into the pool house and stayed there until, until he was able to somehow leave the house. And I'm not sure if he stayed, like I said, it could have been a secret passageways in the house because that's what he said here. All right. The other thing is that they said that they found him. There was a ticket um, under the neat, neat, neat the name John Burroughs at a um, airport. Um, so let me just read that really quickly if I can find what I did with it now. Give me a second. Oh, I lost my place. I was reading this. Now I lost my place. Well, anyway, she said that there was an airline ticket bought underneath the name of John Burroughs left on the 
16th or 17th of August to Buenos Aires. So he probably went to Buenos Aires. And that's all I know. Now on the Elvis tapes, he said that he escaped somehow and he went to Hawaii and stayed on an island in Hawaii and he was there for a while and he rested and he didn't use his voice for a while and he was there for a couple months. Okay. So there was one more account and that was in the press. It was called the Presley Arrangement. I believe it was called that, something like that. Where the guy, there was a, him and his wife were there and they saw something going on. Um, they were waiting for Elvis to come out because she was a fan at the gate. And somehow, some way, they heard a commotion of like, you know, um, ambulances and the doctor arriving first, getting out of the car, excuse me, and running into Graceland. And an ambulance and all that started coming. The police officers started coming. Well, her husband said, well, I'm going to go out back and I'm just going to check things out and see what's going on. So he ran out back and climbed the, um, the ledge there of the fence to see what was going on because something was, wasn't right. And he was being nosy, obviously. He wanted to know what was going on. He said he saw, and this is what he said, he said he saw a helicopter land and it had some men on it and they ran into Graceland and Elvis came out with them and as he was getting on the helicopter, he took two photographs. Actually called Elvis's name and took two photographs. And then, of course, these men, they had to go find him and get the photographs. All right. Because it was a top secret thing. Not sure which way. Not sure which one's the real story. But one of those is probably pretty close. And there was one more account someone said that he took off in a camper with a woman. And, and I think Billy Smith said that. But I don't think that's what happened. But I'm going to say that I think um, Gilbert Georgios was pretty close. I'm going to say because the way he said in here, there might, there's some secret passageways in Graceland. He might have watched the whole funeral. And when they left to go to the funeral home... He decided then to leave uh, Graceland and re watch the rest of the proceedings. Now, as far as moving the body to Graceland. Okay, so now this is the other question. You know, they were going to try to rob his body because they didn't believe that he was dead. Whoever it was, the mafia, probably, leaders. And they knew that there might be a possibility that they might be after the bodies. So Vernon asked to have the bodies moved, him, his mother, him and his mother. Well, Gail dug into the records of that. She questioned this. There was only one transaction to move the body. It cost money to move the body from like in the grave out you know inside the ground to a mausoleum it cost money to move a body all right so there was only one transaction and that was gladys got moved to the mausoleum before elvis went there to be buried so i do not think and this is my opinion and i think i've talked to a couple people that i've heard about a lot of people have said this, that those bodies are not really buried at Graceland. They're just memorial stones. Nobody knows where the, bur the bodies are buried. That's it. But anyway, she questions that in here. She says, well, why is Elvis's gravestone not next to his mother's? Because they're supposed to be next to you. That was his dying wish, 
that he was next to his mother. So she started questioning, well, maybe his body isn't there. And they also couldn't get clearance from the, the, um, the state to move the bodies to the meditation garden. So we don't really know where the bodies are. They're in a private, you know, a private place somewhere. But that's for just family knowledge, you know. That's for their privacy. And I don't blame them for that. So when they say, well, you're going to dig up, dig up the casket. Well, if they actually move that memorial stone, they'll be pretty surprised there won't be any casket under there. Probably. But that's my, that's my opinion. I'm not sure if I'm right. So don't quote me on it. All right? But she does question that in here. All right. And she also said, well, why did Vernon, right, his middle name with two A's? So she was questioning that, which I have a video about that already. Um, and the reason why is because, well, first of all, Elvis told his father, from now on, I want you to write all my legal documents with two A's. Now, this was like close to like, you know, 73, 74, maybe around there, maybe even before that. Um, so you'll find that that, but there's also another reason and that his original spelling of his name adds up to 24, which is this number that follows him on numerology. And I think he wanted to, um, have his middle name, each letter equals a certain number. So to equal the number seven, which is a holy number, a God number or whatever they call it. But it's also, Jesse reveals it in here, well, not in here, but in his press release for this book, that the extra A meant alive because he didn't, he didn't believe that a person that's alive should see his whole name or his real name on a grave that he's not in. All right? So those are some of the questions that somebody asked. But I think I've got it pretty down, pretty down good. I'm not sure. I heard some other stories, but I'm just going to go with that because that's what we're not given. And someone asked me that on the group page today, so I thought I would go over that a little bit more. Um, so on the next slide, we'll see what's next. Maybe the first Elvis sighting. We're going to go on that one. So the next time I'm on, we'll talk about that. And you guys have a great night. God bless you all. I'm going to check and see, are there any comments or anything while I'm here? I don't see any. Or did I keep your comments on? No? Okay. Anyway, if I didn't see your comments, I will check your comments. All right? I'm not sure. I don't know why I don't see comments here. But um, I hope you guys have a good night. And I know this was a quick one, but that's all I can say. <laughs> and, um... I might do a real video. I'm working on a video on his FBI work, that his um, badge and all that kind of thing. So I'll be working on that this week. You guys have a great night. God bless you. Bye.